Welcome to Direct Talk interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Tetsuya Kumakawa, artistic director of K Ballet Company. Kumakawa served as the first Asian principal dancer of the Royal Ballet and later started his own ballet company in Japan. Over the years, his troupe has performed many innovative works. Kumakawa was responsible for the script, the direction, and the choreography for the 2017 original work Cleopatra. The performance was highly acclaimed for its artistic quality and box office success. Kumakawa hopes to establish ballet culture in Japan and broaden its base by performing at a world-class level. We asked him more about his relationship with ballet. October 2018. Rehearsals were in full swing at K Ballet Company. Kumakawa's company was scheduled to put on a production of Don Quixote in three cities across Japan starting the middle of November. On this day, he was providing instruction to young dancers in their 20s who were taking on lead roles for the first time. Kumakawa himself had his first breakthrough in a production of Don Quixote. His enthusiasm is infectious. It's a ballet that saved me, that pushed me up the ranks. So I'm grateful for it, and I want to give back to it, further cultivate it as a work. I made several promises to myself when I started this company. We would not lose sight of what dancing on stage is about. We wouldn't let sentiment get in the way, and we'd bear ourselves to the god of ballet. We had to strive to be world-class in every respect, mentally, technically, emotionally. More so than any other ballet company out there. The ballet Don Quixote is adapted from Cervantes' famous novel. The ballet is centered on the romance between Kitori, an innkeeper's daughter, and the barber, Basilio. It's a colorful affair that involves Don Quixote, the villagers, gypsy dancers, and even bullfighters. The highlight of the ballet is the high level of technicality on display, with a variety of jumps and spins performed throughout. Kumakawa himself danced Don Quixote at the Prix du Lausanne, an international dance competition for young dancers. The 16-year-old Kumakawa put on a dazzling performance and became the first Japanese dancer to win the gold prize. I wasn't brimming with confidence, but I didn't want to come across as lacking it. I wasn't expecting to win, but I did go for it. At least, that's how I explained it when I was 16. When you're younger, you're trying to explore what it is you want to say through your performance. You want to express your identity, whatever you're identifying with at the time. At the time, in my teens and twenties, I was mostly interested in the technical aspect of ballet, and I saw excelling in technical skill as a necessary step in my evolution. So in that sense, I think that performance is certainly of its time. Kumakawa was born in 1972 in Hokkaido Prefecture. He was an active young boy who loved to move his body. He took up ballet because a cousin was taking lessons. He was 10 years old at the time, not exactly an early start for a ballet dancer. As soon as I started taking lessons and learning about movement, I was immediately put under the spell of this intriguing world, this kid taken with ballet. As a child, 
I rarely ever had the opportunity to listen to that type of music. There was just something otherworldly about classical music. It sounded fresh to me. I would say, choosing my words deliberately here, there was something addictive about it. I looked forward to my lessons every week. At 14, Kumakawa's talent was noticed by a world-famous ballet instructor, and at 15, he began attending the Royal Ballet School in the UK. He immediately demonstrated an extraordinary jumping ability and expressivity. After winning the Prix de Lausanne, he joined the Royal Ballet at 17. He was promoted to principal dancer just four years later, an unprecedented rapid rise. I was driven by ambition as well as a desire to dance. These two things created a synergy that acted as my motivation. When a company gives you an important part in a ballet, it's a sign that your talent is being acknowledged, or at least that they expect great things from you. And I was always driven by this insatiable desire to play all these parts. Classes started at 10.30 in the morning, and the curtain would come down on a performance at 10.30 at night. The next day, we had a different ballet to practice from morning until night. Being a dancer was grueling work. But I was happy. I was young, after all, and my body was quick to recover. And just the sheer joy I felt at being able to dance was so great. Over the following five years, Kumakawa danced in many ballets as a principal dancer. However, on the cusp of 27, as he was entering his prime, he suddenly announced that he was leaving the company and he returned to Japan. 27 is a critical age. It's when you come into your own. In terms of the Royal Ballet, it's the beginning of the prime of your career, where you have all of these wonderful experiences and build on your foundation as an artist. They expect you to make a name for yourself. 27 is a starting point for a dancer trying to make a name for themselves within an organization. But for me, there was just this drive inside of me. I wanted to seek out more artistic pursuits. And there was part of me that wanted to try to forge a path for myself. Upon returning to Japan, Kumakawa founded K Ballet Company. Taking his deep understanding of classic ballets from the 18th century onwards, Kumakawa himself took to the stage in central roles and put his own unique stamp on each work. The company garnered a reputation for its refined productions. I see it as the responsibility of my generation of dancers to inherit and pass on the beauty and wonder of the classics to the best of our ability. It's as simple as that. It's not about what I want to say. I'm not going to turn all of the classics on their head in service of my company. K Ballet Company currently performs about 50 times a year. They currently draw about 100,000 people annually. Recognizing that his company was gaining steam, Kumakawa has started to put more energy into original ballets, which he hopes will become their signature works. Over a hundred year history, ballet has maybe 11 or 12 works that are considered classics, and every company puts their own spin on them. That becomes the core of the company's repertory. But then the question is, what is that company's identity? The company needs an identity apart from me. That's where original works come in. In fall of 2017, Kumakawa's company performed a new ballet called Cleopatra, which garnered widespread attention. The ballet is a tale of love and hate based on the larger-than-life historical figure of Cleopatra, queen of Egypt and a woman of matchless beauty. Thank you. 
It's a completely new, original work envisioned and developed by Kumakawa himself. He incorporated new choreography that he developed based on his own interpretation of Cleopatra. In this scene, Cleopatra seduces a man. Cleopatra is embodied as a snake, and the relationship between the two lovers is depicted in their passionate intertwining. In this day and age, it's a challenge to figure out how to depict sex appeal and sexuality. If you ask me, we live in times where artists don't really have room to breathe. It all comes down to adhering to your vision for your art. You have to see it through. And Cleopatra herself lived in such times. She's a symbol of power. She's allowed to do whatever she wants, and it was imperative to depict that on stage through movement. But it also needed to be artistic. I think we pulled it off. Kumakawa was inspired to develop Cleopatra when he came across a certain piece of classical music. That piece was 19th century Danish composer Carl Nielsen's Aladdin, a masterpiece for those in the know. Each individual note of the piece seemed to have the effect of bringing Cleopatra to life. What you have to do is discern the character of each individual sound. You think about what kind of personality each note carries. That determines what kind of movement should be matched to a given sound. You discern the character of the sounds and project that onto the character. And when the dance and the music matches up, you get this chemical reaction. You get something that speaks to the audience, that feels real to them. It almost feels like that musical piece was created specifically for that choreography. When Kumakawa founded K Ballet Company, he had another major goal in mind. He wanted to cultivate the next generation of dancers in his own way. Young dancers who pass an audition get to gain live stage experience using the same costumes, set, and full orchestra as the dancers in the main company. In Japan, training to become a ballet dancer involves a lot of competitions. A competition involves putting everything you've got into a minute-long performance. One misstep can make or break you. Dancers become competitive, and they become perfectionists, but they learn nothing about how to express their emotions freely, about the professionalism that is integral to being on stage. That's the kind of environment at these competitions. That pains me. It saddens me. By giving young dancers real stage experience, he encourages them to refine their expressivity and cultivate their unique talents. For Kumakawa, ballet is a performance art that combines a variety of elements. As people seek out more and more diverse forms of entertainment, he is exploring ways to make the ballet an appealing destination for audiences. Ballet is not a necessary part of day-to-day -day life. You don't need to see it every week or month. It could be something you see once a year. But if people could see ballet as something to treat themselves to, something to aspire to, if you could show them how it can enrich their everyday lives. And when I think about how the experience of great ballet can lift you up spiritually and take you to this higher plane, I do feel like encouraging people to come and see what the view's like from up here. Ballet can heal. It's a place to enjoy fashion. It lingers into the wine you might drink after performance. So when you think about lifestyle, about work-life balance, I hope there's a place for ballet in that balance.